And it's a tail of $2. I got $2 here. Don't get excited. They're leaving with me. I know a lot of times you go to conferences and they say, ooh, I got $2. Ah! No, you're with me. $2. <laughs> now, how much is this dollar worth? Let's go with a dollar. Well, how much is this one worth? A dollar. So what I'm hearing you tell me is that these two dollars have the same value and they have the same worth. Now, let me take this one, ball it up. Now, how much is this one worth? A dollar. How much is this one worth? So what I'm hearing you tell me is that they have the same value and the same worth. Now, let me take this one and drop it on the ground. Let me step on it. Let me abuse it. Let me treat it like it's not worth anything. Let me spit on it. Now. How much is this one worth? How much is this one worth? So what I'm hearing you tell me is that they have the same value and the same worth. Now, which one of them are you going to give the opportunity and which one do you expect to get into Coke Machine University. Mm -hmm. See, there's no achievement gap between these two dollars. You told me they have the same value and the same worth. <laughs> but see, one of them is going to get several opportunities to get in that Coke machine. Come on, baby, I need this Diet Coke. Uh-uh, you going in there. I might feed him in four, five times before I even think about this here one. You're not worth it. I'm not going to even try. I might even smooth out a corner on this one. Come on, baby, I got to have that caffeine. You going in this machine. I'm going to work with this one for quite a while because I'm giving him the opportunity that that one doesn't have. And I'm giving him the expectation that that one doesn't have. But this here one should have the opportunity. And we should expect him to get in the Coke Machine University. But the only way to do that is to do the equity work. Because this here one, I might have to unroll him. <laughs> I might have to straighten out his corners. I might have to build a relationship. I love you and I got to have that Diet Coke. Might put him over my knee and smooth him out. I might have to do a whole lot of work, but if I do that, great teachers did that for me. They saw me for that wrinkled up, spit on, stepped on dollar and said, Patrick, you can go to college. And I expect you to go and I'm giving you the opportunity to go. Because I know statistically where I would be if it wasn't for great educators who saw me as that wrinkled up, balled up, stepped on, spit on dollar and treated me with the expectations and didn't give me the opportunity that this one has because I had the same value and the same work. People like me. People like me. People like me. People like me don't go to college. Nobody's ever gonna convince me that I'm gonna be somebody someday. Street cred, it's more valuable to me than my education. My life will be defined by those who doubt me. I know there are some out there looking up to me. I'll let those AP and honors students be future leaders and policy makers. Because me, I'm just one out of a long line of statistics. Who knows, maybe I'll even study. But it won't affect how my life is gonna turn out. People tell me I can't succeed because they can't see past my skin color or how I talk. They say I don't care enough to be a first generation college student. I am the last person in my family that's going to be successful. I'm aware of the skills and talents I possess. This is my destiny. That was me before Albert helped me see my potential 
believe in myself, and turn all of that around. And now, this is my destiny. I am aware of the skills and talents I possess to be successful. I am the last person in my family that's ever gonna be a first generation college student. I don't care enough, they say, because they can't see past my skin color, how I talk. People tell me I can't succeed, but it won't affect how my life is going to turn out. Who knows, maybe I'll even study statistics. Because me, I'm just one out of a long line of future leaders and policymakers. I let those AP and honor students be looking up to me. I know there are some out there, those who doubt me. My life will be defined by my education. It's more valuable to me than street cred. I'm gonna be somebody someday. Nobody's ever gonna convince me that people like me don't go to college. I come to the world from a background of struggle. Hold your tissues and your tears. This isn't a sob story. This is my success story. This is Avid. My circumstances don't define me in society. Avid gave me the choice to choose my destiny. I am going to be a college graduate. Right now, right here, in this moment, I'm creating my future. The limitless capability of Avid continues to empower me to break barriers. Avid made possible the reimagining of my life from one limited by circumstance to one liberated by opportunity, from one closed by boundaries to one opened by hope. You know what they say, iron ore cannot be educated into becoming gold. However, if the ore receives the right type of education, then the ore can use that education as the most powerful tool to change the world. AVID creates an environment where students learn to hope, to dream, to support, to take charge of their journey. They matter. They are limitless. You are the leaders. You have control of the pen. So write your story and don't let anyone write it for you. I have been pushed to excel despite my circumstances. And I would not let anyone or anything other than me define who I am. I am limitless. We are limitless. AVID is limitless. Before entering AVID, the thought of having a successful future never crossed my mind. Me, going to college, with the way my life is? Oh no, I couldn't bear to think that far ahead. I was only worried about having enough strength to make it to the next day, both physically and mentally. My entire life, I have suffered with a severe medical condition known as atopic dermatitis, otherwise known as severe eczema. For those who may not know, eczema is the inflammation of the skin resulted in scaly patches and open sores. According to the countless dermatologists I have visited over the past 18 years, my case is considered unusual. I have been told, Kayla, your condition is not improving. How about we try this option? To Kayla, maybe we should transfer you to another facility. We don't understand what's going on. 
Over time, I began to get used to disappointment. Now, I want you guys to imagine the skin of an alligator. That's what my skin resembles, scaly, thick patches. I know, I know it may seem a bit extreme comparing myself to an alligator, but for years, humor was the only way I could cope with my condition. Eczema is my kryptonite. It is constantly trying to break me down. Between the persistent flare-ups, numerous doctor visits, constant sleepless nights, and unbearable pain caused by bleach baths. Yes, I was forced to pour Clorox bleach in a bath and soak for 15 minutes. But on the bright side, I had my own personal swimming pool right in my bathroom. <laughs> I didn't even have to pay to get in, so I'm good. To add to my symptoms, the multiple medications and treatments prescribed over the 18 years was horrifying. I have been placed on medication after medication, ranging from immune suppressants, I can't even pronounce, to weekly allergy shots that drained all my energy. I have often felt like I would be nothing more than a lab rat. Health challenges are only a part of the problem. Economic struggles are the sidekicks that stay around between my medical flare-ups. Every time it seems like I'm finally in control of one, the other just comes up and knocks me back down. I come from a single parent household. Two years ago, my mother lost her job of 20 years and with it, her medical benefits and retirement. At the age of 15, it was time for me to step in. Seeing my mother worrying about how we were gonna make it was enough for me. Therefore, I became a necessary and an important source of income for my family. Currently, I am working three part-time jobs, cashiering, babysitting, and a barista. <laughs> While on top of trying to maintain outstanding academic standards. However, the combination of my income and my mother's is not enough to color, cover college tuition, board, or books. We can barely pay for our, my extensive medical bills as it is. I just knew I was destined for failure. But Avid saved me. Avid gave me that confidence to continue to fight my battles. To me, Avid is not just a class that has helped prepare me for college. It is a community that has helped me discover my own potential. Avid has helped me recognize that I am more than the sum of my struggles. It has taught me that I must push myself even when life gets tough. I am not my medical condition. I am not my financial status. This class has taught me responsibility, determination, perseverance, and selflessness. Avid has given me the support I needed to become a member of our school's highly rigorous Health and Medical Sciences Academy with the view of becoming a pediatric oncologist surgeon. Even now, I have been blessed to have the opportunity to have an internship in the cardiovascular surgical unit at the University of Virginia Hospital. Avid gave me the confidence to be Monticello's high school lead choreographer for our annual musical productions four years running. Because of the gifts Avid has given me, I was inspired to write a one-act play, hashtag while black, in response to the racial unrest that occurred in Charlottesville, Virginia in August 2017 and through personal experiences of racial profiling. This play was awarded first place out of 60 plays in Virginia's statewide competition. Over the years, my avid teachers helped instill in me the passion and desire to pursue my dreams. I have been pushed to excel despite my circumstances, and that is exactly what I have done. I would never give up. Even when I feel like cutting my losses, I will not fail. I will not fail my teachers, my mother, 
nor myself. Through Avid and the Avid family, I have been given the strength, motivation, and inspiration that I have needed. So I would first like to thank my principal, Mr. Rick Verhovec, for being the CEO of Monticello High School. <laughs> I would next like to thank my AVID teachers, Ms. Gwen Reynolds, Mr. William Trent, and my AVID counselor, Mr. Irvin Johnson, for being my coaches. And thank you to all of my teachers, families, and friends for being my cheerleaders. And most of all, I would like to thank my mother, Jeanette Rush, for being my biggest fan. With your support and help, I have been accepted to over 20 colleges and universities. <laughs> With my final decision being North Carolina A&T State University. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do the Aggie Pride. So Aggie Pride! <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't want people to view me based upon my challenges. See me as I am, a five foot one, beautiful, talented black female who was determined. who is determined to make it to college and be more than what she came from. As some of the older folks would say, rise above my raisin. <laughs> I am Kayla Scott, and I would not let anyone or anything other than me define who I am, because I am limitless. We are limitless. Avid is limitless. Thank you.